I have successfully unbricked my OnePlus 7 Pro, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to install Lineage OS to it. But before I get into that, I'd like to just briefly discuss why I'm choosing this particular ROM on this particular phone. So Lineage OS is probably one of the most popular custom Android ROMs out there. It's supported on over 100 different devices, and it's a really good ROM to use if you want to enhance the privacy and security of your device, similar to what you might get from a ROM like Calyx OS. Uh, but the main reason that I'm choosing to install this ROM is because I'm interested in de-Googling my device. I don't wanna use uh, any of these Google apps like Gmail, Maps, Drive, um, Google Chrome, none of that stuff. And I think that that's also a similar reason why a lot of people choose to install Calyx OS or Graphene OS is they want to de-Google their device. But what's ironic about choosing those ROMs is most of the time people are installing them to Google Pixel phones. So they're trying to de-Google their device while still using Google hardware, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. And also while we're on the subject of Google hardware, I really don't think that you get a good bang for your buck with it. Google hardware is uh, really overpriced for what you get in my opinion. Like if we take a um, Pixel 5, which uh, for now is the latest Pixel phone. I know that the 6 is literally about to come out in a few days. Um, but if you take a look at used Google Pixel 5s, um, that have 128 gigabytes of storage, typically on eBay, those are selling for about $500. Uh, but if we take a look at the OnePlus 7 Pro with 256 gigs of storage, you can pick up those for about 200. That's about what I picked up this one for. And um, you can see it's in good condition, um, you know, no like scratches or cracks on the screen. Uh, back looks good. It's got lots of fingerprints because, well, I've had my fingers all over it. Uh, so besides getting double the storage at less than half of the price for a Pixel 5, uh, which is a big deal because neither one of these phones have expandable storage, uh, the storage that you're getting in a OnePlus 7 Pro is also faster. It's UFS 3.0 compared to the Pixel's UFS 2.1, uh, which can be up to two times faster. You also get more cameras on the OnePlus 7 Pro, which I guess can be kind of good. I know that smartphones having tons of rear cameras is kind of a meme, but hey, I mean, it's useful depending on what type of pictures you're trying to take. You know, more cameras can be helpful. And you also get a better CPU and GPU inside of the OnePlus 7 Pro. So overall, I would say it's much better hardware, much better bang for your buck, and it's a good device to use if you want to have a truly de-Googled experience. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and get started on the installation process. So on your computer, you're going to need to have ADB and Fastboot installed. Uh, there, these are available as an EXE for those of you that are on Windows, and I'll link that in the description. Uh, but I'm gonna be doing this on Linux. Don't worry though, because the commands are the same, whether you're on Linux, Windows, or Mac OS. And if you're following along on your Linux machine, then chances are ADB and Fastboot are just available in your repo. Uh, so you can go ahead and just install that with your package manager. Uh, you're also going to need TWRP. And I'm going to link the one that I'm using, or at least I'm gonna link to XDA forums because YouTube gets kind of funny when you link directly to software. Um, but I'll link to XDA forums where you can download this TWRP. Uh, now, typically TWRP comes as both an IMG and a zip file, uh, but this particular one is considered an all-in-one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. Uh, if it works on your device, you can use it as well, but if it doesn't boot, then you can get uh, some other TWRP from the XDA forums. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do on your device is enable developer mode. Um, I've already done that, but I'll just show you how to do it anyway. You go into your settings, go to about phone, and you want to tap on the build number about four or five times, and then it's gonna say uh, that you are a developer at the bottom. Of course, mine says no need, because I already enabled developer mode. And after you do that, you can go into system, and then you're gonna have these developer options available to you. Uh, so inside of developer options, you want to make sure you enable OEM unlocking. You wanna make sure that that is turned on. 
And you also want to make sure that USB debugging is turned on. Uh, and if you turn this on while you have a USB in your phone and it's connected to the computer, then a message is gonna come up saying, uh, do you want to allow this computer along with your RSA fingerprint? Just hit okay on that. So now on your computer, we want to make sure that uh, you enabled ADB properly and it's able to communicate to your device. So just run ADB devices. And then this is going to print off uh, a list of devices that are attached. So it's going to give you the, um, basically an alphanumeric of your device. Uh, so if that shows up, then you know that you've done it correctly. If it doesn't show up for some reason, uh, then you just want to make sure that the USB is plugged in all the way and that you did indeed uh, enable USB debugging. Okay, so now we need to reboot into our device's bootloader and the command for that is adb reboot bootloader. And then this is going to bring you to a screen that looks like this. And you can see that right now the device state is locked. Um, now, before we go into the next steps, I just wanna let you know that unlocking the device is going to wipe it. So make sure that you have all the data backed up if you had anything important saved to the phone. Uh, Cause yeah, everything's going to get erased. But the command is fastboot OEM unlock. And this is going to then bring up a message on your phone that says by unlocking the bootloader, you'll be able to install custom operating systems onto the phone. Use the volume key to select the right option, unlock the bootloader, and then power button to uh, hit enter on it. And then this screen is going to pop up uh, every time you reboot with an unlocked bootloader. It's nothing to worry about, it's completely normal and then it's going to start wiping the device. So just give it a few minutes for that to complete. Okay, so now you should be booted to uh, your device's initial setup screen. Go ahead and power off the device. And now what you're going to want to do is try to turn it back on by holding both the power down and, or the volume down and the power button at the same time. And this is going to reboot the device into recovery mode. Uh, so you just want to hold it until you get to that um, boot screen. If you hold it too long, you might accidentally go into um, this like Chinese menu or, or menu that's in some other language. Uh, so to get out of this, if you enter it by mistake, you just want to hit this button in the lower right hand corner, which basically means go back. And then you can use the volume key to select English. And then you want to go to advanced and you want to reboot to fastboot. And then yes, reboot to fastboot. And on this screen, you want to just quickly verify that your device state is indeed unlocked. And once you've verified that, we're then going to flash TWRP onto this phone. So the command to do that is fastboot flash boot, and then you want to pass uh, the TWRP image file. Uh, you might wanna copy and paste this if you're on command prompt, or you're using some other terminal that doesn't have autocomplete. Okay, and then you just want to reboot uh, your phone again. So just hold the um, power button to power it off. And then it should reboot into TWRP. 
still swipe to allow modifications. Okay, and now this part uh, you might not have to do, but it's an important step if your device's configuration is like mine. So when you're in TWRP, uh, go to wipe, go to advanced wipe, and take note of the folders that are here. There should be a system folder uh, that's here. And if it isn't for whatever reason, then you're going to have to first flash uh, this additional zip file called copy partitions, uh, which you can get from the Lineage OS wiki. Uh, and I'll link that in the description below as well. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, fix that. So we want to go to advanced ADB sideload and swipe to start sideload. Okay, so it has uh, started the ADB sideload feature and it basically tells you what you have to do here. Usage, ADB sideload, uh, file name dot zip. So we're gonna go back onto our computer and we're going to run that command, adb sideload the copy partitions zip. Uh, oh, it would help if I use the right command. adb sideload copy partition zip. Okay, and now we want to reboot. Um, don't use the reboot to system. That's here though, you want to or try to get it to focus. You want to go to the home screen, reboot, and then choose recovery. Okay, so now once we reboot into TWRP, we want to go to wipe, format data, type yes. And then this is going to decrypt the device for us. And then we want to go home, advanced, and then go into ADB sideload again. We're also going to wipe the cache and then swipe to start sideload. Okay, and now we're going to sideload the Lineage OS zip from our computer. So uh, same command, adb sideload, but then this time pass in your Lineage OS uh, guacamole signed zip. And then that's going to write it to the device. Um, it might stop at 47%. Uh, which is fine. It's just like a weird bug with, um, I think, uh, TWRP or something like that. But it, it does end up doing it uh, successfully. So just uh, wait for it to finish. And then if it says read command success, um, then you're good. Nothing to worry about. All right, so the process has completed. Let's go ahead and reboot the system. And there we go. Lineage OS has been successfully flashed to this device. I'll just skip this stuff for now to show you guys that it is indeed working. And look at that, Lineage OS is installed. So I hope that this helped you guys out. Uh, it was really tricky for me to get this installed because all of the uh, like guides and instructions that I was using didn't quite work 100% of the way. So this is kind of a combination of uh, several different bits and pieces that 
ended up working on my phone. Uh, took a few days, bricked my phone multiple times in the process, but I finally got it done. Hopefully you're able to get it done as well. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out.